What's going on, everybody? This is Abby here with another episode of Modern Day Unicorns. And today I have a guest. His name is Jovan. Jovan Palmer, right? That is it. There we go. We got Jovan in the house. And we're going to have an awesome conversation with Jovan and everything that he's been doing lately. So, Jovan, welcome to Modern Day Unicorns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So, Jovan, we have been familiar with each other for maybe just, just over a year. Literally, we met last summer. Um, yeah. I believe it, a uh, podcast summit or something like that in Dallas. So, um, but we have yet to have like an actual conversation. So, um, I've been witnessing your work over the past year and, uh, been interested to see what you've done. You've done some, you've had some transitions and things of that nature, but let's start from the beginning. Can you tell us who you are and a little bit about what you do currently? Yeah. Yeah. So my name is Jovan. I, uh, originally from Syracuse, New York, currently residing in Atlanta, Georgia. I currently work as a therapist and a case manager um, for my nine to five. And then my business, I actually am a coach, mental health coach to help individuals who've gone through traumatic situations in life, teach them like strategies on how to overcome that or how to accelerate their healing journey to kind of get them, you know, up to speed or to kind of help them kind of propel that thing. Because sometimes we harbor things and we don't know how. And sometimes we want to speed things up. Sometimes we don't. We want to gonna go through it. So I work with them to teach them how to do that. That's amazing. And I'm mouthful at that because I know a little bit about some of the things that you've done before. So if you could tell us a little bit about what sparked your passion to become a, is it a therapist? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us how did you begin the process of wanting to even be a therapist? So like most therapists, we kind of just fall into it. And that's what happened with me. I kind of fell into it. I was working in the group home uh, back in 2016. And pretty much from there, I was working with the kids, working with teenage boys and took them to a therapy session because it was kind of like mandatory for them to go every week and sat in on one of the sessions. And I was like, this is pretty cool. Had some things I need to get off my chest and wind up scheduling a session with the therapist outside of work, of course. And... I've always had like this passion, this gift of talking to people. Like people would randomly just come talk to me and just like tell me about their business, their life, their situations they got going on. And I always gave like good advice to them. So my therapist was like, you know, do you ever thought about becoming a therapist? And I was like, well, considered it, but you know, not really. So she said, you should still consider it. So I considered it, um, got my master's in social work to become a licensed therapist and everything. And here I am today. See, that's amazing right there. Oh, we have a little bit of a similarity in terms of giving decent advice. Wasn't necessarily introduced to therapy firsthand per se until maybe yeah. as of late. Um, but my turn, my journey took a, a turn because I was at the crossroads of do I become a therapist or do I become an educator? Mm. And my route turned towards education after my experience teaching children through play. So um, it was, and then I became a PE teacher. Now, now things are different, but either way, um, mm -hmm. my route just took a, a different way that led me to a gym or a classroom instead of what people perceive on TV as the couch. Right. Um, <laughs> so that's interesting. But so you've, you've done other things. Mm -hmm. I'm only saying this because I met you on a content creation route and a podcasting route and things of that nature. Can you yeah. tell us how you segued back into kind of full-time therapy and life coaching? Yeah, so the pandemic, really. So at the time I was, when the pandemic started, I was in case, man, I was a social worker for uh, the state of Georgia. And I got overwhelmed and I had, um, I was working with David Shands at the time. I was like working both jobs, like back to back. So I get off work, I come to him, work with him. And during the pandemic, I had saved up so much money that he was paying me. I was like, oh, I can, I can quit my job. I haven't touched any money that was coming. It was just going into my business account. And I had well over like $10,000 just sitting in my account from just money just being paid into that I wasn't using it. So uh, my job got real stressful at the time and the pandemic, it got even more stressful. So I had went on FMLA for a little bit and really just thought about it. And at that time I said, you know what? My sister, she's an entrepreneur. She's been a hairstylist for like years. And she's like, just do it. Like, just take a betting, betting yourself, do it. It's not all the way what you want to do, but just do it. You never know what it can take. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So I figured better myself, put my two weeks notice into my job, and I did content creation, podcast creation, project management, 
event setup, event management, all that stuff. <laughs> um, during that time, we had met, and it was a good it was a good journey for me. I, I enjoyed it, learned so much, met a lot of people, and it really helped me to kind of like put my brand, how to like really brand myself as an individual instead of you know working with somebody else. It helped me to like, okay, now I have my own brand, and it's like, okay, how do you cultivate your own brand coming from a mental health standpoint? That's kind of where I'm at now. Hmm. And that's amazing. And I'd love to talk further about kind of like the transition because we know that the content creation world can be very busy, hustle and bustle. Like you said, you meet thousands of people and things of that nature. And mm -hmm. um, sometimes even coming into your, to your own can be a, a project in and yeah. of itself. Um, uh -huh. And especially when you want to be so efficient um, for larger names such as David Shands and things of that nature. So you pretty much left your full-time job to become an entrepreneur right? Mm -hmm. But now you have another nine to five. How long were you an entrepreneur, if you will? And then what caused you to go back to another full-time job and oh. still run your business? Yeah. So I did entrepreneurship for about a year and a half. And then I got a phone, I think somebody had called me and said, Hey, like we heard that you're in school for mental health and we want to know what off your job. And I was like, mm, I'm kind of cool where I'm at right now. Like, things is cool. I'm fine. And then I sat on and I thought about it. And, you know, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should take it. Because like, this is my, it's my passion. I've always wanted to do this, become a licensed therapist and everything. And at the time, like, I was comfortable where I was at. I was complacent. You know, the job was cool. Pay was on time. Got to travel, see some of the world, meet so many people. Um, I started some other, other businesses during that time as well. So it was just like, What's the point of leaving? And I got, I think a little friction that had caused like the, yeah, a little friction between the two of us had caused like, you know, the decision, but you know what, it's time to do your own thing. And even talking to other people, they're like, yo, you like, they were like, yo, you don't belong here. <laughs> like, what do you mean I don't belong here? I like what I do. And they're like, yo, they're like, you're called to something different and it's time for you to do something different. So I was like, okay. So at the time, you know, in the world of mental health and therapy, you just don't become a therapist. It's like so many hours that you have to get. I'm still getting my hours to become a licensed therapist. Right now, I'm just a supervisional therapist. And uh, I have to, everything I do has to be practiced under somebody. So I was like, you know what? Sometimes you got to take a step backward to go forward in life. And going from entrepreneurship to a nine to five, it's not really a nine to five because it's a contract job, but it's still, I mean, it's what I love. It's my passion. I love to do it. I talk to clients, talk to kids all day, parents all day, fathers all day, and I get to just talk all day, you know, and people like that, you don't find it exhausting. I'm like, not really. The most exhausting part of the job, which most therapists will tell you, is just writing notes. <laughs> you every, after every session, you got to write your notes. <laughs> so that's like the most exhausting part of the job, but it's just me helping people and helping them see them transform. Like I've seen kids with autism that I've worked with transformed from, you know, being very sporadic and very loud and to now like having direction and having, you know, you know mm. having like, you know, a sense of identity and purpose. And I'm thinking myself like, I've never worked with kids with autism. I've never worked in certain like, you know, diagnosis type kids. And I'm like, you're good at this. You're really good at this. You know, when I open my mouth, I, you know, if somebody asked me to talk to somebody real quick, I can do it like that. And so this is the thing that comes to me naturally. So I was like, why not do it? And so I put my two weeks in with uh, Dave. It was tough. It was a tough decision, like very tough decision. Like, he knows to this day, um, it was like one of my toughest decisions I had to make in life because like I enjoyed where I was at. And, but it was just, sometimes you got to take that leap and bet on yourself. And this is my like bet on myself season right now where I bet on Jovan and I make something that I want to work, work. Now, I, I want you to talk to that entrepreneur right now because I think that there's a stigma that after you've left your nine to five, you've become this entrepreneur, you're getting all of this exposure. The I think that we kind of get a little bit. Um, I don't. I don't have. I don't have the words to say, but pressured when we want to go back mm -hmm. to our environments or even try something new. I believe that there is a pressure that comes up, it's just like, well, why would you want to go back and work for somebody else? But from even what you're telling me, it's just like, sometimes it works and it's yeah. not great, right? And yeah. especially if it's your, if it's your passion. So could you speak to those people who are, you know, who maybe have been an entrepreneur for a year, maybe three or maybe even five, and that taking to that thought process of returning back 
mm-hmm. to somewhere where they can essentially get some stability, a steady paycheck. But then st- tearing down the stigma be- behind the returning, like I yeah. think that I think that gives a negative connotation because it's like it's okay to go back. I have thoughts all the time about going back to education. I'm maintaining oh, sure. my uh-huh. teaching degree just in case. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel you up. and like you said you're maintaining your teaching degree so like my thing is like we spent all these all this money on these degrees and it's like you gotta utilize somehow some way and for me going back to a nine to five it was for me it was a no-brainer and I had to take away my pride and allow my pride not to rule my decision making because pride sometimes get in the way and say well you was an entrepreneur for a year and a half you know you work for Dave you work for this person you done this done that and what does that look like? You going back to a job? And I was like, you know, at, at the end of the day, Jovan's bills have to get paid. You know, some people's words and opinions aren't paying my bills. You know, I got to wake up every day and see my clients. I got to wake up every day and, you know, go see some kids. I have to wake up every day and create some content. I got to wake up every day and record a podcast. And entrepreneurship is not easy. So I don't care what nobody says. If you've been in the game one, two, three, four, seven, eight, ten, twenty 10, 20 years, it's not easy. It's exhausting. Like I took when I left from work with Dave, I took a six month hiatus from everything that I was doing content creation wise. I was just exhausted, like mentally drained. I think I might've hit like a slight depression or, you know, whatnot. So I was like, yo, I'm stopping everything. I didn't care. Like much people say, oh, yo, we need your podcast. Yo, we need you. We need your content. You know, I love your stuff. I get it. But I had to make some space and time for me before I keep making space and time for other people. Because at, at the end of the day, my mental well being is it's top priority. Mm-hmm. So my thing is like, if you got to go back to a nine to five temporarily or forever, go ahead and do it. Like your bills have to get paid. You know, you don't, entrepreneurship is expensive because you're, you're investing in yourself. You know, we're invest like if you're a content creator, which most people, if you're an entrepreneur, you're a content creator and you're buying, you know, microphones, lights, computers, courses, conferences, you name it. Like that stuff costs money. And this stuff is, thousands on top of thousands of dollars. And sometimes entrepreneurship dollars don't cover everything, you know? And then what happens is, you know, you run your credit card. Like I ran my credit card up a little bit and so you see, you see the face. I also, I'm trying to get out a little bit of credit card debt right now. Um, and it's just, I need a little bit more stability before I went back out into the entrepreneurships right now. I'll say, you know what, take some stock some time back, you know, recalibrate, Think about what you really want to do, make it make sense, draft it out, and then, yo, just like slowly, just slow drip that thing until you get back to where you want to get to. So, I mean, it's nothing wrong going back to a nine to five. Right now, the tech space is booming. Go into tech if you want to, get a nice little check, work your business, and use that that money for seed money. Like, you know, I was in social work, so social work doesn't pay like that. So I had to, you know, I had to do what I got to do. So I have to like utilize the tech room over here. Drop that into my coaching program, you know, drop that into a podcast, Mike. drop that into a software, drop that into, you know, so it's like, at the end of the day, I had to make a decision that was best for Joe Vaughn, you know, and there was too many times where I've made decisions based on what's best for the individual that I'm working with or working for, that I was putting myself on a back burner. And then what happened was they were taking off and I was more so just like on this steady race and everything. So I was just like, yo. Jovan, you got to do what you got to do for you. If that means going to get a nine to five and still building your dream, so be it. You know, it's just, it's no shame in my game. And, and what I will say about that, it, being an entrepreneur, even returning back to full-time work, you understand your value a little bit more. Yes. And I don't believe that you would return back to a nine to five to be in a worse situation. Exactly. So, so mm-hmm. earlier you, may, you, you, you mentioned maybe taking a step back. And I don't Mm -hmm. necessarily believe it's a step back. I believe it's a step in the right direction for you, right? Mm -hmm. So there's there's no way that I would believe, even in in my entrepreneurial journey and what I've been able to earn thus far, that I would return to work for less than I was making right now, right? So it'll be able to, especially when you you get back, like I, I feel like you fuel your business a little bit more because now you know that you're going to get money every two yep. weeks or mm-hmm. every month. And now you can leverage the time and see how else you can utilize what you have. And a lot of times, even returning back to work, you can leave your job and be done yeah. at a set time. Mm-hmm. Entrepreneurship yep. never ends. Like I worked never. all day yesterday and still woke up to stuff that I was working with yesterday that I have to yep. fix today. And so 
I mean, I've had, I, I, I'll continue to say, I've had my thoughts about just going back because the content creation is a very needy industry. Very. Um, very. And if you don't work for somebody, you still need it for yourself. Absolutely. And trying to find a healthy balance is quite a challenge. So I, oh, I'd love for us to, to talk a little bit more about your thoughts um, on how entrepreneurs can maintain their, their mental health or what they should do to even start that process if it's something that they've never thought about. Yeah, I think for entrepreneurs, I think the best bet is even before you step into entrepreneurship is find what does work-life balance look like for you in entrepreneurship. Because lots of entrepreneurs, we work seven days a week. You know, we don't stop. We keep going, keep going, keep going. And I thought that was like the thing to do until I realized how exhausted I was when I didn't have a day off. Like it's okay to like map out a day off. You say, you know what, if I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a part-time entrepreneur, you know, Friday nights is going to be my off day or Saturday mornings is going to be my off day or maybe like half a Saturday or all day Saturday is going to be my off day. I think finding some time to like really like set some time away for, you, for yourself, you know, is the best thing to do with entrepreneurship. You know, if you don't have to work seven days a week, you don't have to grind. A huge thing about the word grind, it means that, you know, you're pretty much shaving things down. So if you're grinding all the time, you're shaving your time down, you're shaving your life down. You're just, you're just shaving all these things down. It's like you're not really making time for yourself to really build yourself up and have the stamina that you need to become the best entrepreneur that you can. So I think one, setting boundaries with yourself, setting boundaries with other people is definitely top tier. Um, I would say knowing your worth and your value is definitely a top thing to do. If you don't know your worth and your value, people are going to treat you how you allow them to treat you. And then the people who see how you get treated are going to treat you the same exact way. So it's just knowing that worth and that value is, is very key. Um, making sure that you're not overspending, like, you know, living on a budget. Like you could be an entrepreneur on a budget. There's so many people out there who teach entrepreneurs how to live on a budget. You know, sometimes they think, oh, money comes, money go, money come, money go. But it's just like, there's some, sometimes you're going to have these slow months. And when people's money, like when money's not right, your mental's not right. You get stressed. You can start stress eating, you start, you know, doing crazy stuff, you start overspending, you know, pulling out the credit cards, applying for new credit cards to kind of make ends meet. But if you live on that budget, you know, you have money for the times where, hey, this month of August is a little slow. It's back to school. So parents are spending or people are spending the way they used to. So I know August is my slow month. So let me stack up, you know, let me, you know, like what do they call it, the harvest. Let me, you know, prepare for your harvest season, whatever, you know, when you got to harvest, when you got to actually like save and, Say, okay, August is my slow month. I may not have it this month, but I'm used to have enough for my bills to be covered, my rent's paid, my car notes paid, my cell phone bills paid. So it's just taking care of yourself and taking care of your finances are, I think, like the top two things that I can offer for advice. Mm, and that's wonderful. Even myself. So I was raised uh, Seventh day Adventist. It's like a mm -hmm. Christian denomination. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. every Sabbath, Sabbath which is Saturday. sunset Friday to mm -hmm. sunset Saturday, um, Thankfully, and, and as I've aged, I have started to definitely appreciate that time frame and uh, not only to, to reconnect with God, but to allow myself to rest. Yeah. So I have that I have that hard stop weekly. And and I agree with you 100 percent is 100 percent needed. I literally go to church and I crash like for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. um, but I also get time to decompress and it's a time when. I get some of the best ideas. Yeah. But my mind can just be like, no, you don't have to do that edit today. Or no, you don't have to do that today. Just be. And mm -hmm. I get some of the most, like the greatest ideas. And I'm just like, where is this coming from? It's like, because yeah. you're not, you know, buried inside of your computer trying yep. to do something for somebody else. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. So I think that that's a, that's a, the place where I am right now trying mm -hmm. to balance <clears throat> the things that I do for other people versus the things that I do for myself. Yeah, yeah, for And it's, sure. a, it's a difficult balance to strike because the things that I do for other people pay me. The things that I do for myself is delayed. Mm -hmm. And I never know what can come from myself if I don't produce it, right? Right. Versus sometimes the guarantee over here. Mm -hmm. oh, so that's been interesting to navigate and just try to tiptoe but I like I said I've been I've been blessed beyond measure um and I'm going into my third year of entrepreneurship 
Congratulations. Um, and thank you. Thank you. But I have a situation and a deal like no other that gives me a space and the freedom to be able to do this without tremendous stress of finances. Like you were talking straight to me when you were talking about credit cards because my mercy, mercy. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, but yeah, well, we're never getting through these waters. We're making this decision. Yeah. But I just don't want anybody on there who has returned to feel like it's a failure because it's not. Yeah. It's you taking care of yourself. It's you taking care of your benefits, especially like I'm assuming as well. So if, correct me if I'm wrong, for people who are single, who don't have a family, who don't have, you know, a spouse or children and things of that nature, mm -hmm. it's an easier decision to keep doing entrepreneurship because you don't have anybody to take care of, even though you might have exactly. meals and cars. But yeah. for those people who have to go back, like, or entrepreneurs or the whole family, I don't know how y'all are doing it. Uh, Especially if you're not making what you're making. Exactly. And I think, you know, I feel like I was talking with my homeboys about this, actually, I'm glad you brought it up, where it's not fair to your family that you want to risk it out here. Like, you know, you, you don't create it and establish this family. And then all of a sudden you want to become an entrepreneur. And now your family has to suffer because you want to finally live out your dream. It's like, no, you're going to have to live out that dream nine to five in entrepreneur until that entrepreneur subsides that entrepreneurship I mean, uh, nine to five money. You know, so it's not fair that your children got to see, got to go through poverty and struggle, or they got to kind of see like the late nights and early mornings because you're so much time is being taken away from them because you're not being able to split. You know, you don't know how to manage your time well because you entrepreneur 12 hours a day. I've, there's been times where I've worked literally 12, 13 hours a day. I mean, up butt crack of dawn in the morning at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., don't get home till like 10, 11 o'clock at night and got to jump back up and do the same, do it all over again. Now imagine like you got a family, you're taken away from your family and that's where we're finding so many people are getting divorced nowadays in an entrepreneurship journey because no one's making time for each other anymore. You know, no one's saying, okay, this is Mondays, we're going to do brunch together. Wednesdays, we're going to take a walk together. Just simple stuff, simple practices that we can do if you're dating. Those, for like, those who are dating who have families, like we're not making time. It's like the business takes the forefront. Even when I was like dating, it's like seriously dating once upon a time, entrepreneurship was like the thing because that was what the community I was surrounded by was the entrepreneur, you got to make this your thing. It becomes everything. It's your baby. And I'm like, eh. now that I think back about it, you know, I've made some unhealthy decisions putting entrepreneurship first, which I understand, you know, we got to build this thing and we got to build it from the ground up and it, it is your baby and everything, but it's like, there's balance. Things are, I believe in divine timing and things are going to happen in the timing that it needs to happen. We can't rush what God has for us. We can't rush the timing that God says it's going to happen. It's going to happen when it's that set and divine time where it's time for you to take off. It's going to happen then regardless if you work 24 hours a day, if you work five hours a day, if you work three hours a day, no matter how much time you put into it, it's not going to go off, take off into that divine time. And once I've realized that, I said, you know what? You can relax your mind because when it's your set, of, your set time is supposed to happen, it's going to happen. And I think that even when you bring up that particular point of balance, I, I do believe that if anybody wanted to enter into entrepreneurship, your single time is probably one the of the better time. times to try because mm -hmm. you don't have a whole bunch of other people's feelings to really consider or people, other people to provide for. But yeah. I say, I'm now I, I say this and I'm, I'm mindful of my words. I am an introvert, not the greatest at dating in general, mm -hmm. but. I would say entrepreneurship keeps me quite busy. So <laughs> even that area of my life has been uh, pushed to the back burner mm -hmm. because of the other things that have in in front of me presently. But yeah. like, I'm just like, I don't literally, I'm like, I don't know if I have time for all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a whole, like, I, I give so much to what I'm pursuing yeah. to have to split my time and my focus on somebody else seems mm -hmm. like a daunting task as, as, oh. as, as, as good as it, as it can work and appear and things of that nature. Like, I don't necessarily know how I can juggle all of that stuff at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Like tell people all the time dating, it's not hard. Like, you know, incorporated into your life is not hard. It's just a challenge, you know? So if you're not ready for the challenge, then I say, yo, just stay single. Just stay single. Like there were times where I stayed single on purpose and it's okay. Like I had stuff within myself I need to work on. There was 
a business I was trying to do. There was life I was trying to explore. So I said, you know what? I'm going to be, I chose to be single. Like, yo, they were, people are trying to hook me up all the time. I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool. Like, I just, I'm cool by myself. Like, I'm like that introvert, extrovert. There's times where I'm like, I want to recluse and be by myself and be in the house and put my phone on do not disturb. And then there's times where I want to be outside and having a good time and entertaining people. But it's just, you got to learn that balance and you got to learn who you are. And I think during your single season is the best time to really indulge in you and invest in you and find out who I am, not just in entrepreneurship, but in life and relationships and your work atmosphere and your family, like find you. I think when you find yourself, you find your purpose and you'll find that one thing that needs to work because I've seen people, they do business after business, after business, after business, trying to find that one thing that works. And uh, Mike Todd said it best. Uh, he was like, you know, just be faithful where you are and God will find you where you at. And I feel, I feel like, you know, if you just be faithful to that one thing that you know that you really want to do, it'll take off. But we don't give it, we don't dedicate enough time to that one thing because we're just trying to get all the next, next, next wave, you know, no pun intended, you know, there's credit to anybody who does credit repair, but credit repair is like a thing. So people go and do credit repair. They go do content creation. They do videography. They do photography. I've been that person who's jumped from thing to thing and not putting my time and, you know, efforts into that one thing, my gift. You know, so for me, it was like, I know my gift is a great gift. I got a gift. I just didn't put enough time and effort into it because I was just trying to make a dollar bill. And you try to make a dollar bill, I still want to be in broke. So it's like, just put all your time and effort into your passion, that, that thing that you know is going to work, that thing that you know you put on the back burner because it, it just doesn't make sense right now or it doesn't make a lot of money right now. But if you, there's an audience out there for everything. Uh -huh. And we look, if we look at all the inventions out here, we look at all the social media apps that's being created. There's an audience for any and everything. You just got to find them. You got to find your tribe, cultivate them, nurture them, and they'll, they'll come. And that, that's that's another another wonderful point. Like it takes a great deal of patience to actually, you know, in a sense, make something work, if you will. And working is that defined differently for a lot of different people, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the image that always comes into my mind is, you know, the the one where the person is like literally like mining for diamonds or something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. just you know, hammering away. And one person hammers and hits something little immediately, and another mm -hmm. person's hammering for what appears to be a long time and they give up right before they they find what would have been a really big uh, advantage for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the stage that I'm in right now. So it's like, okay, you know, just, you know, continue on and, and refining. You said something about what you want to do. And mm -hmm. I want to highlight that for sure. That entrepreneurship, business owning, all this other stuff, side hustle, whatever you want to call it. So much that you can do. Yeah. But understand that you only have to do what you want to do. That's it. Like just doing things because it's it's popular, it's trending. It seems like other people are cashing out. I don't know how much money I lost on crypto, but either way, like you touch it. I put thirty dollars into it. Good for you. Good for you. Um, it wasn't. It, it was a. It was enough. But either way, like do what you want to do. I think of the mm -hmm. people who you know. Make the toothpick, the post it, you know, hot dogs, all the other stuff. Do what mm -hmm. you want to do. And like you said, your know, vibe will attract your tribe. Uh, too many times we just get busy doing what other people say that we're good at. Yeah. Which is why I started, which is what also fueled my interest in entrepreneurship as well. Because it's a really good PE teacher. But at the time I was frustrated because I couldn't do what I was interested in. Mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed, if you will, to invest more of my time or the better half of my day into something that I was interested in because I kept doing something that other people said I was good at. Yeah. I knew it, yeah. but I was like, I feel like I have a bigger influence or I need more space to be able to to, to test this thing out. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's what pretty much what fueled my, my whole my whole journey. Like I said, I still substitute at schools because I love education. I love children. Um, I was like, but I just needed a big stage platform area to be creative. And the yeah. school day just wasn't hitting for me. So like, even if I do return, like the way that I navigate those, those waters will be different mm -hmm. because I'm, I know, I know what I need now. I yeah. know some of the things that I need to uh, have time to do, have things to explore um, throughout the school day. So sorry, I'm sorry. 
do, or in every episode, I do ask for the guest. And thank you so much for the time you spent with me so far. Appreciate you. Um, for three tips um, about almost anything, but I, I would love for you to speak to individuals about how they can find out more about themselves. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, yeah. I find the question that irritates me a lot as well as, well, what do you like to do for fun? You know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like being um, African-American, you know what I'm saying? Growing up in very interesting circumstances from time to time, especially when I was living in the U.S., mm -hmm. a lot of times we're in a society that does not allow us to think about ourselves first. Yeah. Right? And so when the question of how an individual is or what they like or what they aspire to be, it's just, I'm just trying to pay this rent. What do you mean? That's it. <laughs> what, like, what, do you, what do you mean? And so could could you could you speak to the, the terms of how one can even slow down enough to can figure out who they are, what they like, and what they want to do. Yeah. I would say, uh, one, just slow down. Like you mentioned it, just slow down. Just find some time to slow down because you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. You're going to lose yourself. And that was me. I was going on go, on go, and I felt, felt like I lost me for a second. And I had to take some time away. Like I said, I stopped everything I was doing for like six, seven months just to find me, and I was okay with that time. But now I'm saying, okay, I took some time to find myself. I journaled a lot about me. I went on nature walks. I went to hiking. I kind of like went back to the simple things of life that I missed doing. You know, I traveled a little bit more. Um, I started back dating again. Uh, what else did I do? So I was like, during those things, is finding my finding yourself is just digging, taking the time to really dig down inside of you and to find yourself. Ask yourself these ugly and daunting questions that you don't want to ask that sometimes they scare you. Um, ask, you know, some friends about it. What do you think? Like the, the closest, your close people, like your tribe, your homeboys, your hungers who know you through and through or your family members who know you. Ask them, if I was to be doing anything in a row and you could pick that one thing for me, what would it be? And if you get the same thing from multiple people, it's like, okay, that's my thing I need to focus on. Finding yourself sometimes come with losing yourself. Sometimes, you, so Fantasia said, sometimes you got to lose to win again. So maybe you need to lose that person that you created yourself to be and really go back to the person you'd like to be. You know, there's, I was in a space full of people who wore chains every day, who wore fancy shoes, who all types of stuff. And I was like, yo, I remained the same. I wore t-shirts, jeans, a cap, you know, every now and again, be an earrings. I had a little baby chain that I had just kept tucked inside. So it was like remaining true to you. Like you don't got to follow, either, you know, everybody, the, the uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the trend of what's going on in society. Like nowadays, everybody got a train chain on. Everybody got a Rolls Royce. Everybody got a Bentley. And it's like, yo, just remain true to yourself. And if you remain true to yourself, that's how you continue to keep finding yourself and how you continue to keep growing. So I'm going to give you another business task. Um, I need you to go ahead and make that journal for our generation, you know, to find it's, yourself, the questions that we need to ask. Yeah, it's coming. I'm crazy you asked that. So I have it written up. My homeboy challenged me it's to put it out by his birthday, which is like September 26th, I think it is. Okay. So I have it. It's it's a journal, pretty much finding you like questions you need to ask yourself. You know, pretty much kind of find. I haven't titled it just yet, but it's pretty much gonna be like lots of questions that ask yourself, like really challenging questions that's gonna like challenge you to really think about what you're doing, who you are, and everything. Okay, great. So this episode will probably air after September, so we should expect <laughs> a journal. So go ahead and just look in the description, folks, on where you can go ahead and Absolutely. download that journal. Uh, because Jovan said he's going to come through for us. Uh, gotcha. So we, we we expect that. So I'm just going ahead and just uh, claiming that at the moment. Say less. Say less. <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much for, like I said, the time that you spent with us, being able to um, help us understand a little bit more about you. I'm going to ask you two questions. Two okay. questions. Uh, one question is, now that we've had this conversation, I'm going to ask you who Jov Jovan Palmer is. I would say Jovan is the devoted individual who has found himself, found his passion. He's outgoing. He's sometimes can be a little too hard on himself. Sometimes he doesn't give himself enough grace. Um, he's that guy that you can depend on. He is passionate about his passions. 
passionate about his time, passionate about mental health, passionate about people. He's uh, outgoing, witty, uh, a little spicy sometimes. <laughs> um, I, at, at the end of the day, I can just say Jovan is Jovan. And I'm who I love. I'm, I feel like I finally just kind of stepped into me at the year 36. I just turned 36 last week. And at 35, I said, I'm going to choose the word becoming. And I'm becoming, that becoming is just becoming me. You know, all the things that I said I want to do in life, I'm doing them. Whether they're big or small, I'm just doing them. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Um, okay. And then the last question is, where can we find, follow, support, download our ebook? <laughs> all right. So for now, right now, since I don't have the title for the ebook just yet, just follow me on Instagram, Jovan, J. Palmer, J-O-E-V-A-N-J-P-A-L-M-E-R. Um, I'm rebuilding my personal website, but it'd be jovanjpalmer.com as well. And then you can catch me on Vulnerable Moments, the podcast, which should be out hopefully starting next, not hopefully, starting next week, Vulnerable Moments, the podcast will be back. So I'll be dropping stuff in there as well. So those are the places in the avenues that you can find me right now. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. Listen up, folks. Uh, we've had another amazing episode. If you are a modern day unicorn or you know somebody that is, I'd love to continue to have these conversations with all of these amazing people. And until next time, we will see you. Peace.